wanted to talk about all the knitting books I own. I have accumulated quite a few over the last few months. I kind of have a problem. <laughs> I keep getting them. So anyway, let's get started on the knitting books. I've got quite the pile here. Okay, I'm going to start with my two like old ones that I bought secondhand. These are the first two I ever bought. They're both classics, actually. First of all, Stitch and Snitch. Stitch and Snitch. Knit happens. This is by Debbie Stoller. I got this secondhand. It teaches you a lot of the basics. Like how to weave in ends, how to knit, how to purl. I think it teaches you knitting in the round, how to make pom-poms, how to do seaming. And then it's got some patterns in it. They're all quite dated. They are quite dated. I haven't made any of the patterns myself. Am I planning to? Not really. I kind of just wanted this because it was cheap. It's the essential guide for chicks with sticks. I hate it. I love it, but I hate it. And then another one that's actually one of my favourites. Uh, Elizabeth Zimmerman's Knitter's Almanac. I think there's, yeah, projects for each month of the year. If you're someone who is a very seasonal knitter, like I know I am, uh, you'll probably really enjoy this. Uh, the patterns in here are fucking classics. Elizabeth Zimmerman is a comedic genius if you're a knitter. She knows what she's talking about and she does so with a large amount of humour. Elizabeth Zimmerman is a riot. So yeah, they've got patterns for each month of the year. You've got like an Aran jumper. You've got a bunch of jumpers actually. Some socks, some hats. One thing I actually really want to make from this book is her leggings pattern. Nether garments, September 95. I was looking for leggings, but they're called nether garments. These are said nether garments. I think they could be very comfortable. Maybe be adapted to be a bit looser, to be joggers. Like, imagine doing them in Fair Isle. Just like traditional Fair Isle. Which brings me onto the next book. Or two. 200 Fair Isle Designs by Mary Jane Mucklestone. Now, a lot of people might not have a use for this, but I've just taken a really big interest in colour work. And this goes into colour theory, techniques, all sorts, as well as, as it says on the tin, having 200 Faro designs um, and swatches of each and every one of them. So like here are just some. And charts, colour charts and black and white charts, suggested all over repeat charts good stuff. And related, Alice Starmore's Charts for Colour Knitting. This takes a bit of a different approach. It kind of walks you through designing a jumper and then takes you through different regions. This is the Russia page. There's South American ones, there's uh, single motifs, horizontal borders, vertical borders, all sorts. I love it. And it walks you through designing a colour work jumper. It suggests starting with uh, single motifs and doing so using intarsia. So like single motifs like these. Like imagine those all over like an autumnal jumper. I think that could be really cute. But I hate seaming. <laughs> so I don't really make garments flat and then seam them together because I'm lazy and I do not wish to learn seaming. Like, don't get me wrong, I understand mattress stitch. It just always looks bad when I do it. I just can't, I, it just looks bad. So I much prefer stranded knitting in the round and it's quite difficult to do single motifs doing stranded knitting because you'd have to carry floats really far between the single images, basically. So I'm much more interested in the more feral designs. There's even a section on Celtic designs, which is really interesting because I live in Wales in the United Kingdom. 
and I have Welsh heritage. I was born in England, unfortunately, I know. So I found this book really interesting. Um, am I rating these books? Okay, let's rate these books. Two out of five. Very dated. Three and a half out of five. Funny. Dated, but timeless, kind of. Somewhere between dated and timeless. Four out of five. Goes into the history of like Shetland knitting and different types of wool you can use for colour work and all sorts of good stuff. Love this book. This one? Five out of five. Honestly, five out of five from me. I, I can't think of anything wrong with this book. I just, maybe I wish it was a bit bigger. Um, but it's, it's really quite comprehensive. Maybe I wish it had patterns in it. Okay, it's been downgraded to four out of five because it shows patterns that Alice Starmore has created in photos in the book, but it doesn't supply the patterns. Which, if they're relevant to the book, then just give us the patterns. Don't make us buy the patterns separately. I already bought your damn book. On to the two that I got for Christmas. First of all, Lace Knitting by Helen James. Oh, just look at this. I just find lace so beautiful. Come on. It's just not fair how pretty lace is. This book inspired me to make what I'm making for my mum for her birthday in August. I'm making her... I think it's called, called the Rose Trellis Shawl Vest on Ravelry. It's a cascade design and it's, yeah, it's a waistcoat vest cardigan. And uh, it's basically a big rectangle with armholes with like a gorgeous rose trellis lace pattern on it. And I'm going to make that, it's actually a work in progress I have here. I'm not going to show you the work in progress in case my mum watches this, but uh... This is the yarn I'm using, and isn't it? It's a Cascade Ultra Pima Cotton. Pima? Pima? Probably Pima. Ultra Pima Cotton. And it is the softest, silkiest, drapiest cotton I have ever touched in my life. To be fair, the only other cotton I've ever used is Lily Sugar and Cream. And I don't like that stuff at all. But yeah, Lace Knitting by Helen James is quite good at letting you know how to read charts. And how different materials will affect your lace and it supplies loads of lace motifs motifs um information on edgings and borders techniques and loads and loads of different stitches oh and a few patterns so this book has a five out of five from me honestly it's not the biggest book in the world pretty small it's smaller than i thought it was going to be but it does the job. It does what it says on the tin. Five out of five. The other book, oh God, this is a stonker. Um, the other book I got for Christmas, it's kind of my baby. 100 Knits from Interweave. This book is a chonky boy. A, the chonkiest of boys, honestly. Um, but Again, it does what it says on the tin, it's got a hundred goddamn patterns in it. Which is just excessive really, considering this- I know this book is like £30, but usually a pattern is about five quid on Ravelry, so I would say this is a bargain. There's lots and lots of pretty patterns on here. There's cowls, there's colour work, there's lace, there's socks. There's full on garments, like jumpers, hoodies, cardigans. A lot of them come in plus sizes, which is important because me and my husband are both plus size. So a pattern's a bit useless to us if it only goes up to like a 40 inch bust. Um, so yeah, ow, I hit myself in the tip with it. Um, I'll give this a five out of five, honestly. Really great for browsing at night, genuinely just love this book. Um, am I planning on making anything from it? Yes and no. I want to make my husband a hoodie and or cardigan and there are some really suitable ones in here like this 
snowball hoodie. Very nice. I'm a little bit terrified of attaching a zip because I don't have a sewing machine. Sewing by hand has not historically gone well for me. So I'm a little bit terrified of attaching zips to hoodies. But yeah, I would, I would love to knit my husband something from this book. Very good Christmas present. Really loved, like, looking through it on Christmas Day. It was great. And my last physical book is actually a brand new one that came out this year. I think it came out in January this year. I don't know how to pronounce her surname. Gorn? It's either Gorhan or Gorn. I'm gonna go with Gorn. Nora Gorn's Twisted Stitch source book. And the thing that sold me on this was this beautiful cover image. This like chunky knit twisted stitch cardigan or jumper or whatever it is. It is truly gorgeous. I want to make everything in this book honestly. This book isn't primarily a pattern book it is primarily like a technique book and a stitch dictionary of sorts and it tells you how to do twisted stitches gives you a twisted stitch pattern dictionary, gives you a bunch of patterns with twisted stitches on, including the one on the front cover, which I was very happy about. Oh god, that's gorgeous! Nora Gorn is a genius, honestly. Like, you can hear how little I've read this book. Um, yeah, you can hear the spine opening up a bit. Um, look at that waistcoat. Honestly, I would wear the heck out of that. So I might have to make it. I love the like slightly fluttery open armholes. Hexagon pullover. Oh, it's just so beautiful. Um, I love this book. Am I going to make anything from it? Who knows? I've got a lot of projects in the works right now. So nothing from this book is in my immediate queue. But... I want to make everything in it. Literally everything. Like, please. Mainline that into me. This was worth every penny. I pre-ordered this book because, as I will show you, I actually own her cable source book. Knitted cable source book? Is that what it's called? I own a digital copy of it on my favourite book of them all my that is slightly dusty right now. Let's open the books app. Knitted Cable Source Book. I love this book. It is what made me fall in love with cabling. There are patterns. There are all sorts of wildly crazy cables. There are simple cables. It kind of walks you through designing your own cables. It's a great book. I would give it three and a half out of five, I think. I've seen a lot of cable patterns that aren't in that book and I know logically that that's perfectly okay and that she can't be expected to put every single bloody cable in her book but I feel like it could be more comprehensive. Like the um, honeycomb cable isn't in it. Honeycomb cable is like my favourite cable, why didn't you put it in? Who knows? But otherwise I really enjoy it. It's a good book. I think Nora Gorn is a brilliant author. Love it. Uh, what else do I have? I have a couple of stitch dictionaries. I have the up, down, all around stitch dictionary and the knitting all around stitch dictionary. These are pretty passable stitch dictionaries, in my opinion. Um, I would give them both like a three out of five. There's no particular reason I'm marking them down, but they're just stitch dictionaries. Nothing special, really. I have Lena Corwin's Made by Hand. I can't say I've read much of it. It includes like sewing and crocheting maybe. Jewelry making. Yeah, that's crocheting. Hand painted children's leggings. Like dyeing stuff. Patchwork pillow. Yeah, it's okay. I would give this a two out of five. It's nothing special. Yeah, it's called A Collection of Projects to Print, So Weave, Dye, Knit, or Otherwise Create. I got all these um, books that I'm going to mention in a humble bundle. It was like a while ago, as I was like just getting into knitting, they did a book bundle on crafting. And there was a lot of knitting content in there. I also have this book, Magpies, Homebodies, and Nomads, 
by Cerulea Rose, A Modern Knitter's Guide to Discovering and Exploring Style. This book, I haven't delved much into it since I first got it. And I think when I first got it, I wasn't looking for books on style in knitting. I was looking for books that would teach me how to knit and give me patterns that I could follow. Whereas this has a lot of patterns, but it's a lot of it is about finding your style as a knitter. And I didn't appreciate that at the time, but I think if I were to go back and look at it right now, I would very much appreciate that as I start designing. Basically, it, it posits that there are three different styles, magpies, homebodies, and nomads. I would say I'm probably a magpie. I like to collect pretty things. That's just how I am with knitting. I would give that book a probably three and a half out of five, because what I read I enjoyed. I just kind of went a bit over my head at the time. I also have You Can Knit That by Amy Herzog. This is a thing full of jumpers. I haven't knit anything from it, but I found it really encouraging when I knit my first jumper. Just seeing seeing this book in my library was like, yeah, I can make a jumper, you know? So I found that really encouraging and I really enjoyed looking through it. This is the book that introduced me to the concept of swatching, like doing a gauge swatch. Yeah, I have continued to do gauge swatches for garments, not for hats and scarves and stuff like that because does it really matter if you've got an, an average kind of sized head and neck, like the, your scarf might be like an inch off, you know? But this introduced me to good swatching etiquette and told me why I should swatch. It talks about different fabrics, different yarns, like pattern schematics charts. Basically it's just spoon feeding you. That's me spoon feeding you. How to, not design, how to knit a, a jumper. A sweater. A jumper. Um, there's like vests, there's cardigans, there's pullovers. I think there's seamless ones. Honestly, I don't ever intend on making a jumper or cardigan that isn't seamless. It just seems pointless to me. Honestly, this book I would probably give a four and a half out of five. If you're thinking of making your first knitted garment instead of just an accessory, I would say have a look at Amy Herzog's books. Um, she has quite a few books on jumpers. She also has a website called like Custom Fit, I think, um, where she has a bunch of patterns and you can input your measurements and it'll custom make you the number of stitches and increases and decreases and all that sort of stuff um, based on your measurements. So. If you really struggle finding patterns that fit you, Amy Herzog's custom fit is probably a good place to go. <laughs> but as far as this book goes, you can knit that. I can knit that. Four and a half out of five. Japanese Stitches Unraveled by Wendy Bernard. Um, Japanese Stitches Unraveled I haven't actually looked that much into because when I got it I was very intimidated. And I still am intimidated, but less so. Honestly, this is... This has a lot of very nice designs in it. It's got basket stitch, welted leaf, ribs. I'm sure there's a bunch of cables and lace in here. I would probably, I haven't looked that much into it, so I can't really give it a true rating, but I'd probably give that like a three and a half out of five. It's being docked marks purely because it's not very beginner friendly. I don't know, I might come back and up my rating once I've had a better look at it. What else do I have on my iPad? I've got quite a few uh, knitting books on my iPad. I also have The Art of Circular Yokes, Terry Bogart. First of all, just look at how beautiful this cover art is. Look at how beautiful this model is. Look at how beautiful this yoke is. Genuinely, this is what attracted me to the book. Um, it walks you through, it walks you through how to design a circular yoked jumper or cardigan. Sweater, if you will. Because sweater seems to encompass both jumpers and cardigans. Don't know what that's about. It walks you through how to design a circular yoked sweater, which I may be in the process of designing one. Who knows? Maybe. I have one word for you, if you want a hint. Bees. That's it. That's all you get. But yeah, I'm in the process of designing a circular yoked sweater, and I felt like I needed a guide on how to do it. But also, the patterns. Oh... Dear Lord, the patterns in this book are to freaking die for. I cannot tell you how beautiful the patterns in this book are. You have to go out 
and buy it for yourself. I actually, I can tell you how beautiful the patterns in this book are because if you really wanted to know what patterns were in it, you could search The Art of Circular Yokes on Ravelry. Because here's a hack. If you want to know which knitting books to buy, here's the true takeaway of the video. If you want to know which knitting books you want, search the name and author and the word Ravelry. There should be a Ravelry page where it has every single pattern in the book listed. And maybe you can buy them individually, maybe you can't, but they'll be there. It's just one of Ravelry's five billion incredible features, but it's a very useful one. It helped me know that I wanted that interweave book. It helped me know I wanted the circular yoke book. Because you can go on there, browse the patterns, it'll tell you how many patterns are there, and it'll list all of them, and you can go into each individual page so you know what kind of yarn it uses and what kind of needles it uses. Like, it's just incredible. So if you take one thing away from this video, let it be that. If you're looking for a book, search for it in the word Ravelry. Anyway, back to the art of circular yokes. I really like this cardigan called Lace Columns. And it is by Amy Gunderson. Lace Columns by Amy Gunderson. Look at this cardigan. Need I say more? I, I, I would have paid £10 just for that pattern for that one cardigan, honestly. And there are 15 patterns in this book. And I paid 11 pounds for it, for the Kindle edition. You can't argue with that kind of value, you just can't. I think if you wanna buy the hardback, it's like 20 pounds, but I would say that is still more than worth it. It's not only a pattern book, but it's also a reference book, a designer's book. It's just an incredible book, five out of five, don't come for me. Five out of five. Um, and I think that's... No. I have one more book. I have a really weird story about purchasing this book. I couldn't find this book in stock anywhere. And the only place I could find it to purchase online was ebooks.com. That's what it is. And it's gone because it signed me out. Well, it's something along the lines of like seamless sweaters you can knit in two weeks. If you search for that, I'm sure you'll get the right book. Don't buy from ebooks.com. Their ebooks have DRM and you need their specific app to read it. And it's, it would be okay if it was like the Kindle app where it's actually a, a really decent app and I can read it in like open dyslexic and all that good stuff. But it's a really, really bad ebook app. And uh, you need to be online all the time. You need to be logged in all the time. Just don't buy from ebooks.com in like, there is no unless, really. Unless you really want to deal with a really shitty app that doesn't even work all the time. Which was very frustrating at first. Um, I would give that book... I'm gonna try and keep ebooks.com out of my head while rating this book. But it may affect my rating, in all honesty. I'm gonna give it a three and a half out of five. Not because of ebooks.com, but because I think the patterns are quite simple. I think most of them, there are a billion patterns like them on Ravelry, if you look. I was personally enticed by the like, A, the, fa a, the fact that they're seamless, and B, the fact that they claim you can knit them in two weeks. Two weeks is definitely a stretch um, if you're not knitting a jumper out of chunky or super chunky yarn, um, but definitely doable if you literally have nothing else to do. Like, I knit a jumper in two weeks over last summer because I didn't have anything else to do. So I just spent two weeks straight knitting a jumper. But even that was out of chunky yarn and it still took me two weeks. And it was the simplest jumper you could possibly make. Still took me two weeks. And it's still slightly more cropped than I want it to be. The sleeves are slightly shorter than I want them to be. It's just not the best. And this is out of a material I don't particularly like. It's just not a jumper I love. I wear it because... It would be a waste not to, and also I'm very proud of the fact that I made a jumper in the first place. But yeah, I think we're at the end of my video. So let me know if you have any favorite knitting books or crochet books or any kind of craft books. If you're, hell, if, if you're reading a fiction book, let me know. Is it any good? Um, I'm much more into nonfiction than I am into fiction right now because I find it easier to read. Like there's just a lot of commitment with a fiction book whereas a lot of non-fiction books you can dip in and out of um like i love cookbooks baking books and knitting books at the minute and gardening books 
do I have any gardening to do? Absolutely not. Am I considering asking for a raised bed for my birthday? Actually, yeah. I want to grow vegetables, man, and be self-sustaining and all that good stuff. So yeah, let me know if you're reading any good books. Let me know your favourite knitting book if you have one. And let me know if you've bought any of the same ones that I have and that if you would give it the same rating. Bye-bye. <laughs>